Welcome to the new topic of matrices. This can be found in chapter five of the year 11 general mathematics textbook. The title for this is lesson one, exercise 5A, the basics of a matrix. The learning goal or learning goals for this one is to see what a matrix is, how to order size-wise matrix, the difference between columns and rows of a matrix, to know what an element of a matrix is, and what a zero and a square matrix is. The success criteria for this one is to be able to put an order to a matrix and to know how to sum a column or row of a matrix. Now, these board notes can be found within a class, within the resources folder, just in unit two, and you'll see a new folder called matrices. So the terminology of a matrix, how you say or what you name it, whether it's a matrix or matrices, just dependent on if it's a plural or not. So matrix is a singular form, and the plural of this is, is called matrices. It's not called matrices, uh, it's matrices. And what a matrix is, in a nutshell, is a rectangular group of numbers sit out in rows and columns. It does not matter what numbers are within that matrix, how many rows have been set out and how many columns have been set out, it still will be considered a matrix. Uh, it just really depends on the context of how, what you're answering. You usually put a matrix, once you put your columns and rows of numbers, um, you will put a what's called a square bracket around the sides of the matrix itself. You don't need to put it on the top or the bottom. Um, please don't put a rectangle or a square around it. It's just kept within this format. The next thing we're gonna be looking at is the order and what's considered the size of the matrix. And this is just simply defined by however many rows there are within the matrix and however many columns there are. Uh, so that is, if there is uh, M rows and N columns, this is said to be of order M by N. Now remember, M and N are replaced by numbers dependent on the matrix. This example here, the amount of rows there are within the matrix is three, and the amount of columns there are four. This is considered order-wise a three by four matrix. This is a three by four matrix. Now, what order you choose to have, it really depends on the context, but pretty much, as long as the number is a natural whole number, it's not a fraction or a decimal, you can have an M by N matrix or any number by any number matrix. How you remember which number goes first, you always think rows first and then column second. How I like to think of this, is the teacher Rowan Connell, who is a PE teacher in our class. I always think of Rowan Connell. Row first, column second. Um, I, I think I've told him I've, I've used his name for this example. I think he just laughed at me. Um, but it's a good way to, to have the students remember. Um, and how you know which one is the rows and which one is the column, I always think of, if you are a person here, this is a bird's eye view and you're going to the cinemas. Uh, you need to see which row that you need to sit at. So the rows are the things that go across like this. So maybe you up to row 20, row 20 is around here. You'll have 20 rows. Columns is just the amount of vertical strips of numbers there are. So columns, just like the Colosseums, from bottom to top is a, a long column. How many columns will there be within the matrix? You always determine how many rows there are by counting across and then columns. Uh, not counting across, sorry, counting down how many there are, and then columns, counting how many there are across. With the names of a matrix, these are dictated by a capital letter. You can choose any capital letter, and you can also name matrices on your class per calculator, which we'll look into later on. So the numbers within a matrix, these are called elements. An element is de denoted by the corresponding lowercase letter of the matrix and two numbers referring firstly to its row position and then secondly to its column position. So this is, and uh, this is a bit small, so I'll um, put this up. So this can be written as C of I comma J, or this can be written as C of just I, J without the column, no, the comma, sorry. 
All C means is what matrix we're talking about. And then I will be the position of the row and then J will be the position of the column. So in this example here, and I'll have to scroll up to use that as a reference. Element C13 just means this matrix here, C. We want to know what row one is, which is within this row. And the column is three, which is there. The value of this one will be 16, because it's in the first row, third column. Where element C22 is row two, column two. So you just go to row two, which is here, column two, which is here, and this value is eight. So this, this element notation is just talking about what specific number or element are we talking about using these two numbers as a reference. Now the reason why sometimes we use commas is just because the amount of columns or rows goes beyond 10. So sometimes you might see something that looks like this, and we don't know if this is um, row one, column one, or row 10, column one, we're not too sure. So that's why we sometimes dictate it or use the comma notation within there. Uh, the sum of um, either a row or a column will equate to the total of the variable attached to that row column. All this is saying is that if we wanted to row some sum of row three, we get row three, and every single element within row, uh, row three, regardless of what column position it is, we can just sum this up. So five plus six plus 10 plus one, in this case will be 10 plus five is 15, plus six is 21, plus one is 22. The sum of column two, look at column two, and we would just sum all of these numbers here. The successful is 10 plus eight is 18. Question will generally tell you what is the sum of column two, what is the sum of row three within the starting questions, but then sometimes uh, it won't be as obvious if they're using context questions, and you'll get to that later on. For now, all you just gotta know is how to sum them up. The number of elements within a matrix is purely determined by what the order is. So in this case, this is a three by four. Well, we know three by four, or three times four is 12. So we know that there are 12 elements within this matrix here. Few other more terminologies. A row matrices, or row matrices or row matrix, which is also known as a vector matrix. A row vector is a single row of elements. Now, a good example for this is say we can use capital R. Now we want a single row, um, single row of elements. So to have a single row, it's going to look like this. And regardless of how many numbers we have within the columns, we're going to have five, two, and nine. This is a row matrix because there's just, um, doesn't really matter how many columns there are, but there's exactly one row of elements within there, one, one, one row of numbers. So this here, R is a, and the rows are R, one, by having columns are R, three. A row matrix will always be a one by N matrix, where N can be any number, any number. So you might have three in this case, you might have 20, 39, as long as it's just one row, it is a row matrix. And as the name suggests for the next one, a column matrix is exactly the same thing, this time, We'll have one column regardless of how many rows there are. So in this case, this one here is a three by one. This will always be considered as an M by one matrix. Again, M can be any number. In this case, I've made it a three. You can have 30 uh, numbers go down. You can have six. Um, it doesn't matter. This will be considered as a column a zero matrix is just every element is zero. So maybe we can write, let's just change color again, Z. It could be zero, 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 zero. You will rarely uh, stumble across a zero matrix, but it does uh, pop up within context questions. It just really depends on the context itself. 
In the square matrix, number of rows is equal to the number of columns. So it doesn't necessarily matter how many elements there are, or well, not how many elements, that is um, an important factor, but what elements are within here makes no difference. This right here is a two by two matrix. And because the number of rows is equal to the number of columns, we consider this a square matrix. And this concludes this video for the basics of a matrix. Go ahead, check your log sheet, see what questions you need to do from chapter 5A. And I'll see you in the next question, next question, the next video. Till then, tell you all.